Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Hello. Woo! Today, we're going to talk about Kevin Hart's new hosting gig, dating app Tinder's year in swipe review, and the most popular dog names of 2018. Plus, HGTV's Dylan Silver joins the table to discuss her new Snapchat original show, You Wish You Lived Here. But first, but first, the 2019 Golden Globe nominations were announced this morning, and there were definitely some big surprises and snubs. HBO's thriller series Sharp Objects and Amazon's marvelous Mrs. Maisel are coming in strong as leading contenders in major categories, as well as box office hit A Star is Born. It seems that the 2019 Golden Globe Awards will be something viewers will not want to miss. Golden Globes, woo! Golden Globes. I do love the Golden, Golden Globes. Globes. It is the most it is the weirdest, most random award show, but it's always so fun to watch. Movies and TV all in one. Hollywood Foreign Press, who are they? No one knows. But they decide these awards. And people can drink at the show, so it's usually just more fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think. I just enjoy it more, and I, I know they keep it a little shorter, too. Yeah, yeah. and right. this year they're revealing the new uh, shape of the award. <laughs> is that it's the new shape? Globe. Yeah, that's the new shape. Yeah, that, I think the part that middle of the part. globe's new. Got it. A fancier wow, globe. Wow, it looks totally different. I can't even recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> what like, is that? Imagine getting it and putting it on your mantle and people were like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. you, you don't even get the credit for it. Mm. Uh, so what are your favorite categories? Okay, I am most excited for the best performance of an actress in a TV series drama. Good category. Here's, here's who's up, and I can't even, I can't pick. Kytrona Balf from Outlander, Elizabeth Moss, Elizabeth Moss from Handmaid's Tale, Sandra Oh from Killing Eve, Julia Roberts from Homecoming, and Carrie Russell from The Americans. Mm -hmm. How do you pick? Like, That's a very competitive category. I really don't know. I have to like go with Handmaid's Tale because season two was so amazing. But surprisingly, season two was not nominated. That is a right. snub, was not nominated for Best Drama. But Elizabeth drama. Moss was amazing yes. in yeah. season two. But like, I'm it, surprised they weren't nominated for Best Drama. I know, it wasn't, and that's, that's what people are talking about. But also, it's interesting, not only is she nominated, she's also hosting with Andy Samberg. Sandra Oh is nominated. Andrew, yeah. And the fact that it's a BBC show, this is the Hollywood foreign press, I think Sandra Oh actually is a real shot of winning yeah. this award. Oh, because the foreign press favors foreigners. Kind of. Yeah. They have, they, have a, they, they vote a little bit differently sometimes, especially with TV. Um, she's Canadian. And, 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 she's, and she's great. And that was a really good show. So. Well, I want her to win. That's yeah. a hard category. Sandra O, oh, I'm putting all my eggs in your basket. See? I think she is going to win, even though I thought Julia Roberts was really good in Homecoming, right. too. Yeah. What well, about Carrie Russell for the and, Americans? And no. the Americans is over, yeah. and so this would be her last chance to win for no. that role. And oh. people loved this final season. They might yeah. do that. I don't think she should win. No offense. I just think other people's performances yeah. are stronger. Yeah. But I feel like because the Americans are gone, they're going to be like, we got to give it to Carrie. Right. I know. I don't like when they do awards like that. It's like, it's not a not goodbye a tech. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a Golden Globe. But we know that Elizabeth Bith is, I can't not say that name is gonna have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. it's an old English name. I know, I've never heard of it. <laughs> She's gonna have more opportunities to win, so I think that's why sometimes that's a factor. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And on the male side, I'm just happy Billy Porter from Pose was nominated. Pose oh, got also a Best Drama nom too, and I love that show. If you guys haven't watched it, yeah. it's a really good show. Wait, Shannon, what category are you excited for? Ooh, I'm really excited for Best Limited Series or Motion Picture Made for Television. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because you know I'm looking towards American Crime Story winning. <laughs> I'm selfish like that. Um, there's also HBO's Sharp Objects. Um, I've never seen a very English scandal. Has anyone at the no. table no. seen that? Me no. Either. It's on Amazon, right? Uh, yeah. However, yeah. as someone who has only seen the assassination. Of Johnny Versace, I really hope it wins. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Sharp objects, sharp. though. <laughs> don't tell mama. I, so sharp objects. You know what I'm talking about? I've don't tell mama. That Mama's in the it. audience. No, I would say Versace. I don't know because you know Versace won the Emmy, but it's been off a lot. It's been a long time. Since exactly. On sharp objects was like kind of this year's. I thing. know, but don't you think a movie about a scissor shouldn't win? <laughs> Allie, oh, how many sweetie. times do we have to tell you? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not, not about scissors. It's not, and you gotta watch it. It's more. <laughs> no, it is so dark and it was so beautiful. The acting, Patricia was like so on point. Amy Adams, like yeah. they brought that book to life in such a creepier way, which seemed yeah. impossible. So for me, Sharp Objects is my pick, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And Big Little Lies won last year, and that was an HBO show. So they kind of those HBO miniseries yeah. kind of get those globes, but those we'll, HBO those miniseries get, get those the globes. globes. Yeah. Ooh, slutty for the Golden Globe. Uh, I think what people are gonna be talking about too is Best Actress in Most Picture Drama, mostly because. Great, Nicole Kidman, Glenn Close, Melissa McCarthy, who's family fantastic in this new movie she's in. Yeah. Ros Rosen R Pike, who of course is a great actress, but I think it's gonna go to Lady Gaga. I really yeah. think momentum's behind her. I think the Hollywood Foreign Press has given, she won an award for American Horror Story, and if she won an award for that, 
I mean, I think she'll win it for A Star Is Born, which she was actually very good in. And they look, I think the Hollywood Foreign Press likes giving actress, singers to become actresses awards. So I think this might be Lady Gaga's award she's going to get. Yeah, she probably will. And she'll say, uh, well, you can be one person in a room of 100 <laughs> people. And only one person needs to see you for who you are. She'll say in her speech. What is that? It's this viral <laughs> meme that she... Yeah, you don't know it. Oh she goes God. around in her it. press tour. She's always like, there could be 100 people in a room and 99 don't believe in you. But just one person does, and that was him, and uh, he believed in me, and that's why. Oh, Bradley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but she says it every single interview. So it's like, and I forget the comedian. Somebody that strung it together. Yeah, yeah. strung it together, and it's really oh, funny. Shoot, it's, I need I'm to see that and the grape surgery. Rooting for her, but yeah. like, she's, are you not on the internet? I am like so <laughs> bad. All I all I do now to keep up with the internet is read Shannon's tweets. I literally, <laughs> just read at coffee's tweets, true. and they will just keep you updated on I'm all trying. the weird shit that's going on online. <laughs> Sometimes I think about sending you stuff, and I'm like. I'm not gonna, she knows, it's no, on the internet. No, send it. Okay, yeah. send, I'll send it. it now. I'll send it. I don't know. <laughs> I send you stuff. Yeah. yeah, I do follow your tweets also. Oh, thank and I try you. not to like all of them because I'm like, I'm being Do you guys follow you. my no. tweets? Yeah, no. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Of course I follow you. Um, I'm rooting for Lady Gaga, but like, how do you beat Nicole Kidman and Glenn Close at I Lady know. Gaga? Like, she's up against some heavy hitters, well, so better, it's not a shoe in They're better actresses than her. They, they're actual actresses, but I'm just saying yeah. this role. Whoa, no. Shadi. I mean, Nicole, Nicole Kidman and Kidman Glenn Close. But she is actually an she's actress. She's great. No, Gaga. she's great. And but they're I, on I par with like win. Meryl Streep and Viola yeah. Davis. Yeah. Like, okay, these are Meryl heavy Streep hitters. Fine. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Well, it's oh, cool. so, like, also, you're talking about how long they've been acting. Like, yes. Gaga's only true. had a number Very of true. roles. So, like, if Gaga had the same number of opportunities and roles to work on, she could definitely 100%. be on yeah. par with those women. Totally. True. That's Very all true. I'm saying. Yeah. Right. And I feel like this award ceremony is just, like, kind of set up for Stars Born to sweep, which yeah. is, like... We already know it, like, it's like a little, like, and it's gonna happen, and we're just all gonna be like, oh yeah, we knew that. Well, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Right. But my like, dad's gonna be so happy. Like, my dad oh, has yeah. not stopped texting me about how good Lady Gaga is, and how much he loves her, and he's like, she's gonna win. Right. Yeah. She's gonna win. The and I'm like, are you threatening so me? Powerful. Are you threatening I'm like, I'm, I'm not holding her back. Uh, the music is so powerful in that film. I mean, mainly the main number, yeah. uh, Shallows. Yeah. That, like, that just carries so much emotion behind it that I think people are just like, okay, that has to win. And Bradley Cooper got nominated for Best Director. I think he's going to win. And I think, oh, oh, oh. I think he's going to win Best Director. It, he, I, mean, I think, actually, it was achievement in directing. Yeah. Like, and I think <laughs> when you look at the drama category, the, the other nominees for Stars Born aren't as strong. I think, you know, Black Panther was apparently, you know, amazing. Black Panther is amazing. But yeah. Black Clansman was great. But I mean, Rhapsody got mixed reviews. Okay, which brings us to yeah. Best And then drama. if Beale Street Could Talk is another one nominated, I do love that That's there's not three... Out yet, right? Huh? If Beale Street could talk. Is that uh, it's coming out it's coming very out. soon. Coming yeah. out. But I love also that those are three black movies yes. that are nominated for Best Motion Picture. Right. I mean, that's really amazing to see. And I still got to root for Black Panther because if you're looking for a movie that had the most connectivity with people, I mean, but I, I don't think that's what I agree, but I don't think that's what they evaluate, though. Of course, but I'm just saying, like, if they wanted, if they want people to be happy with the results, Black Panther should. Win. Black Panther should. I agree. Win. Okay, but that's so not how you should. How you should. <laughs> if they want people to watch this damn show. Yeah. Okay, what? that <laughs> maybe is a point, but I agree with you. The uh, the amount of representation we have in that category is awesome. Yeah, it's a uh, At the same time, we don't have any female directors nominated, so it's another you know snooze fest. Yeah, the nominations always ebb and flow. It's like we'll have one good year and then. It goes back and then it's sort of. But mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm happy the Good Place got nominated for comedy. Me too. Finally, the Good Aww. Place. And but Maisel's probably gonna win again. <laughs> but I love well, the Good Place. Right. But how about um, Andy Samberg and Sandra Oh? Do you think they're gonna be good? Interesting pair. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Do they have chemistry? They presented. I don't know. In, all they've done together is they presented an Emmy Award together. Uh, so I guess that's how you. What we were talking right, about. Right. I guess that that's the new audition right. for getting work in Hollywood. Yeah. Yes. I like them individually. She's done a little comedy, but she's such a dramatic actress that I'm interested to see what she does hosting. She's yeah. definitely funny yeah. though. Yeah, she's I funny. I think she's funnier than Andy Samberg. <laughs> Me too. <Yeah. laughs> I don't, I think Andy Sandberg is done. I think we're done with him. I'm confused why we're bringing him in. I think, because Brooklyn nine is moving to NBC. Yeah, got that's why. Up. I know, that's so sad that Brooklyn Nine-Nine got picked up. <laughs> I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I was so sad when... Uh, that's a funny show. That's Michael, Michael Schur EPs that. That's a funny show. That's I think the show. saddest part of that situation was that uh, Last Man on Earth got canceled that same day, yeah. and Kristen Shaw was like, hey, want to pick us up too? And it was like red at 9 p.m. And they never <laughs> responded. They didn't even like it. I was like, Jesus. Oh, oh. sad day. Also, yeah. just to be clear, I've never seen Brooklyn Nine. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. That, that I don't makes know. sense. It's, and the cast is top. 
Like it's a really good. Okay, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't. It's know. boom boom. It's boom boom. <laughs> I love it. Well, from the Golden Globes to the Academy Awards, the Oscars finally have a host. Actor and comedian Kevin Hart will MC the 91st Academy Awards, set to take place on February 24th. Hart took to Instagram to announce the big news, telling fans that it's the opportunity of a lifetime, and promising he will be sure to make this year's Oscars a special one. All right, so this is a huge, huge role. A lot of people actually shy away from it because of the criticism that usually comes with taking on this role. How do you think he's gonna do? I think he's gonna do very well. He kind of reminds me with his stand-up roots like Billy Crystal when mm -hmm. Billy Crystal was hosting. Mm -hmm. And I am excited for him to be super creative with it and fun in a way that Jimmy Kimmel, he's hilarious, but he's just not like silly. Right. Um, and also Kevin Hart just has such a, like a hardworking story of coming up in show business and like starting to headline and like tour nationally and eventually headline in the city and like to see this progression in his career, I am in awe of it and impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's gonna do a great job. I don't have any doubts that he's gonna kill it. Yeah, I agree. I think he actually maybe been the only person that can do it right now. With right like now. ratings decline, they needed someone who's young but not too young funny but not too controversial, movie star, can bring in people, a person of color, like that is someone, he is probably the perfect person yeah. to host the award shows. I mean, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, I love, I really, I, the only people I didn't like were, I mean, James Franco and Hathaway, that was a rough Oof. one, guys, sorry. I blocked Wait, that one out. I, yeah, I don't yeah. remember that. You know, exactly, <laughs> that was really He was so high, right? He was so high, and the she just was time? grasping for, yeah, she was, she was, she was so stranded hard. alone. Oh, poor, poor Anne Hathaway. She was I, fighting. First time I felt bad for really, it was like, oof, girl, you, you're going through yeah. something I here. love Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Aw. People yeah. hate on her. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, I mean, Kevin Hart. He's, he's gonna be. He's gonna be good. Oh my God, so rock hard. I'm telling yeah. you, he's beefing up. This wow. dude is getting so ripped. It's distracting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to move oh over here. God. Give room for his muscles. I'm like, where's my prompter? The next story is. Yeah, is my prompter in your man titties? <laughs> <cheese? laughs> uh, the thing about Kevin Hart, you Objective mentioned he's five. so connected. He's yeah. got so many famous friends, and I'm hoping that he calls in some of those friends to do funny bits, like, oh, yeah. because he is so connected. He's friends with everybody who's like hitting right now. Who would have been good other than Kevin Hart? Jamie Foxx, for me, is the consummate oh, entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. He and been good. Sometimes he gets looked over, but he is so funny and such a good singer and such a good dancer and such a good he actor. Can he can do everything. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to see Jamie Foxx host. Yeah. I, I would love to see a, like a- What about Tiffany Haddish? Tiffany Haddish, yeah, she yeah. would've been good. I think she would've been like a little too, like all over the place. What about, she, I think yeah. in a couple of years what, when yeah. she's yeah. like been in the business long. Yeah. What about like my Rudolph and Kristen Wiig? I, I mean, would love I that. would obviously be down for that. Yeah, like yeah. that would be like, that's a cool show and I don't know. Hey, Oscars, if you're watching next next year. Yeah, <laughs> I would totally. My Rudolph, I feel like should host everything. Right, oh because my God, I'm into. I think a lot of people don't connect to like sometimes her sense of humor is so silly and weird. Right. But that's what I love about. But the her. problem is, the ABC con basically controls the Oscars. So they're never going to pick someone who's like an NBC right. person. So that's why like Fallon would never host. Colbert is never going to host again because he's CBS. So like they always have to pick someone who's like medium, not anyone's. They did let, let Tina and Amy do it for two the years, Golden right? Globes. Oh, NBC. you're right. That's a wrong. And they work with NBC. You're right. Yeah. God. Guys, it's, we're all controlled. You know who's <laughs> in charge of this show? Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Say, like, Bezos I love Facebook. It saved my life. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. you know who controls him? Russia, yeah. And so you, this great. is a Russian show! This is a Russian show! Yeah. Hillary killed those people! Joking. Honestly, that's not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> That Russia was really frightening. You know that's a joke. You know how much I love Hillary Clinton. Like I have her yeah. tattooed on my chest. Who are you? Months. Imagine someone tunes in and they don't know us. <laughs> We're like acting like everybody's our good old friends, but they tune in. They're like, oh my god, these Russian love. <laughs> I know. Weirdo. The comments. The comments are yeah. gonna be horrible right now. Notice I didn't say anything. <laughs> Put yeah. that out there. You didn't don't say anything. You're gonna be commenting You're on your me. alias. Silence is still bad, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't speak out against us, so you're still. Part of it. Tomorrow's episode of The Daily is going to be like <laughs> a brunch morning talk show run by Russians. <laughs> this is The Daily. This is The Daily, and we're going into build brunch. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily's part of Russia, too. Exactly. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, man, I'm excited for the Oscars see. to bring it back to what we were talking about. I think it's going to be a good show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I was going to transition. Global <laughs> dating app Tinder has officially released their year in swipe, a compilation of the app's 2018 data trends, ranging from popular bio words to app activity and more. The dating application revealed that the most popular day and time to use Tinder is Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if Tinder is for you, set those alarms and slay some hookup love. Ooh la la! Ooh. Whoa, Monday at 9 p.m. That's
that's when I'm horniest. <laughs> also, in August was the month if you really want to maximize it. Really? Wow. Why do you think Monday at 9 p.m.? Is it just like, oh, the work sucks. I want to find a lover. Yeah, I yeah. bet you go to work and you're like, dude, why am I even on this planet checking, like, going to work and wearing clothes? And you're like, I don't have to do this. I have an interesting theory. <laughs> yeah. So the Bachelor and Bachelorette are always on on Mondays. Oh. And I will speak from experience that sometimes when I'm watching these dating shows, I'm like, I want to find love too. And I start swiping <laughs> during the show. Brittany, that First is all, amazing investigative journalism. That is there. so Thank you. That is why you were on this show. And that that is actually like, that I, is brilliant. I, that amazing. is brilliant. You are right. Thank yeah. you. And also, when you just so said true. you want to find love, you were so cute, Shannon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't comment on this anymore. It's an issue. I think Brittany's it's being too cute all the time. Workplace issue. Yeah. I'm like every day, like I love you. She's like, I love you. Do you love, I love me you back? Too. Yesterday, she was jokingly, she sent a text message being like, "You guys aren't paying enough attention to me," and I was like, "I literally <laughs> proposed to you today." Got a ring. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so this Tinder thing was also interesting um, because in the UK, the US, and Australia, that how you do in GIF was the most used Joey, yeah. thing to like message that people were sending to people. I'm like, yeah. if somebody sent me that GIF, I would definitely not respond. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. friends. <laughs> Reddit, not no response to that. Friends is like the, has like not left the most popular television shows in right. the UK. They're like obsessed with it. Also, weird fact. Mr. Brightside, the song, since its debut, has not left the top 10 charts in England. Really? <laughs> I don't know top 10. Yeah. Maybe like overall charts, no. 100 charts. Are you top, sure? Top 10. What did you read <laughs> Coming with the fact, Ali. You got to come in yeah. Okay, correct. or top 100. Okay, okay. very yeah. different. That's still yeah. really still, weird. Yeah, so weird. <laughs> I was like, wait, she is from Russia. <laughs> I was like, you're spreading lies. I'm like, I'm like, putting their own to me. <laughs> Help sending the drones now. <laughs> That was good, good job, Natasha. Thank you so much. Natasha. <laughs> you know why? Because the, the first liquor store that would sell me drinks when I was like 15, they I would go in and they would like give me anything and that woman was Russian and she would be like, do you have dollar? I'll give you vodka for dollar. <laughs> so I would give her like a dollar and I would just hang out with her. And that's when you became an asset. Yeah. <laughs> get liquor and then that's when the Russians yeah. recruited me. I got it. That's a really actually kind of romantic story. I'm surprised bit. you're sharing so much honesty about yeah. your spy yeah. history. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, um, yeah, also, oh, this is great. So the way, what women, what they searched for the most was like, um, and men was engineer. Yeah. While men searched for women, adventurer. Well, not engineer. Engineer. Oh, yeah. They engineer. Put, they, put, they put in quotes <laughs> in the article, but like, I guess when you type, I don't use Tinder, you type it in. No, engineer. no, they just, I think they were just looking for men who were engineers. Right, they, and you yeah. tag it in your, like, you tag oh, it in your bio. Oh, you tag it? Because you get the money, because engineers have money, right. but they're usually like, not as socially outgoing, so they're not going to cheat on you, yeah. I think. Oh, smart. Yeah. But, num but number two was athlete, model, lifesaver. Okay. For women? Oh. All yeah, those guys are going to cheat on you. Lifesaver? <laughs> What's that? I have no idea. They're like a can, a piece of candy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or like a yeah. body? Guard? Like literally like save life lives? I don't... Maybe. Oh, maybe like a firefighter or a cop? Oh, like one of those. Oh. Yeah. Like a lifesaver. Oh, okay. Okay. I love that men love adventurers. Yeah. Like they're like, my ideal woman, she's out in the wilderness <laughs> with no phone service <laughs> and no one to help her out. Right. And you're like, what are you planning? I <laughs> think like most, most yeah. men are just like, uh, I want someone who will do anal. So yeah. I guess adventurer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> again? I, I literally was like, no, it's a guy who wants to have a threesome. Like, yeah. Are you adventurous? Yeah, it's I, such shady again, shit. Again, that is yeah. great investigative journalism. Yeah. You are correct with that. Yeah, it's just a euphemism. Still in? I feel I feel like that's so 90s. Oh yeah, people oh. all over Tinder are asking you to have threesomes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've been, been on the app. Apple that approaches you? Yeah, like, I haven't oh. been on the app for like over probably a year or two now, but I got approached by several couples. Are yeah. they all How many old you say yes to? No, they're like young people. Oh okay, I, I feel like yes threesomes are for none. old people. It's okay if you said yes to a few. I did it. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a life experience. Nothing wrong with that. No, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I just think like, oh, three. Why not add more? It's, <laughs> I know. It's so weird. Why Whenever stop Shannon three? and I show up to the same orgy, we're like, <laughs> I'm not enough people. <laughs> 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 Genitals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, also to do about this, um, Instagram has become a new dating app. Oh, right. So yeah. that's kind of a new thing. Do you think it's going to phase out Tinder, people just sliding to DMs? Like, so... 
I think that it's, I just heard a silent yes from someone in the audience. <laughs> yes. uh, I think it's a popular way for people to meet people. Yeah. It does come off as a little, it can be shady. That's what's, mm. that's what's difficult. I like it because, I haven't done it, but I've told you guys I want your input because there's this guy that I have seen on Instagram and I like look at his Insta stories and I think he's interesting and I'm like, how else would I meet him other than sliding into his DMs? Right. But is that creepy? I don't know what his relationship status but is. But do you know him in person? No. So how did you find him? Just through the internet. Oh, and do you know he's in New York? Yep. Oh. Wow. So I'm like, should I? Yeah, I think you I think we'd have things in common and like, huh. should I just send him the how you doing GIF and just see what no, happens? Oh no, no, you're better than that. That's bad? I think I know what you I would do in that situation. I would find a post he liked and then send it to him and be like, oh my God, I love this. Okay. Or just something really casual like that. And it's like, don't even address the fact that it's like you're random. Just okay. be like, this is so funny or something like that. And I'll keep you guys posted. Do you have to respond if someone does it to you? Cause that's a, I, I feel awkward. People DM you and like, do you no, respond? I have well, only if you're into them. You just don't open them. Yeah. No. If you're not no, into them, do them, not respond. I don't respond. You read them, but don't respond. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're not into them, be like, thank you, here's my phone number. <laughs> That's what I, yeah, I go, here's my, where I live. You're like, this is yeah. so weird, come, I live down the block. And come from Monday from six to nine. That's what I In do. August. In August, yeah, sure. watching The Bachelor. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever found someone on Tinder and they have their Instagram mm -hmm. listed there and then you just get off the Tinder yeah. app and go to Instagram yeah. and add them and be like, so organic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fake. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's odd when they put the, maybe it's not. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't do that. I want to put up some walls. Mm -hmm. I personally on dating apps don't put my Instagram because it's like then you, you can find everything about me. And yeah. It's like yeah. I want to control a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Anyway. Okay. Well, Rover.com, the world's largest network of pet sitters and dog walkers, recently revealed its annual list of top dog names. Leading the pack were Max and Bella. Um, royal dog names also saw a boost, but the most popular included names from popular films and celebrities. We all love dogs here. So th are you, were you guys surprised by the people? They all sound like baby names. They yeah. like the same do. names. And they are babies. Oh, that's true. They really they are. They're babies. Yeah, I feel like on the, like, the 2018 list, like Bella was also number one for like humans. Mm -hmm. So that's in interesting. That is a little odd. I, I kind of do like when dogs have like really human names, like Karen. Like I want that <laughs> a dog, like a little dog who just like, embodied a Karen and like when the Karen and Karen is like what like it just like it <laughs> cracks me up. That's Did funny. the dog ask to talk to a manager also? Yeah I feel like it's that that she would. She would <laughs> ask to talk to a manager. Well, Karen that dog would. I just love yeah. that. And they're like oh, Karen's my mom. <laughs> and they're like it's okay she should stop like calling if, a dog, if I had a dog named Melissa like I would crack up. That's yeah. fair. What's the male version of that like Doug? Dog <laughs> That's such a cute dog Matthew, name. Like a dog Matthew. Like my dog Matthew. I was like, okay. Huh. I've met so many dogs named Max. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm not at all surprised by that. My grandpa has had like three dogs named Max. Mm. Listen to how weird this is. My grandfather had a dog named Try, and then my grandfather got another dog and named it Try Two. <laughs> Whoa. That's Wait, like. why not try again? <laughs> Ooh. I really thought you were going to say try again. No, isn't try. that odd? Try, and then try died, and he got another dog and named it Try Too. That's, I've got one similar. My dad's name is Clarence Jones, so people call him CJ, and he has named three dogs CJ. Uh, love a man on who loves himself. What earth is wrong with these men? <laughs> I know, it's like they named, like three times you're going to name the dog after yourself? It's wow. weird. And so yeah, so it was all CJs. Yeah. yeah. And what does he say about that? He loves it. I mean, he doesn't yeah, care. Yeah, that's he my, doesn't. my grandpa it doesn't even face him. I'm like, that's weird. He's like, what's weird? <laughs> <laughs> this um, this weird. list also included like dog names named after alcohol, and I love the alcoholics who are unashamed just to, that they love alcohol, name their dogs whiskey. Like the that party. is beautiful, Wait, right there. I'm realizing now that my family is really weird because my <laughs> grandma's dogs were named Martini, <laughs> Bailey's, Jack Daniels. <laughs> And I think like whiskey and Stoli. Oh, oh my wow. God. So they were trying to tell you something. So she's yeah. an alcoholic <laughs> and he has dementia. <laughs> Yikes. Great. Anyways, family. Thanksgiving. Yay. <laughs> my grandma's name was, uh, dog's name was Gonia. Oh. I, have no Gonia? Idea. I have no idea. It was just weird. a weird name. What are your what? cats named? Um, I have one cat named Kachu. I have a, a family cat named Buddy. These are a lot of names. We like adopted them and they already had names for uh -huh. years. And then my, um, there's Olivia and there's Cinnamon Girl, who we call Cinna for short. Ooh. Yeah, she's okay. really cute. That's cute. What's your puppy's name again? Ellie. Oh, yeah. Ellie. But that is one, I named her Ellie and then I started realizing it's a lot like Allie. <laughs> <laughs> and so when people on the street meet Ellie and they know my name's like, and I don't want to then say my name because sometimes, and so I'm just saying I'm Maria. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And now people think my name's Maria. Oh, I wish your name was Maria. Um, 
oh, that sucks. You don't like her? You I mean, like a, you can Alex Maria. cute, but Maria's like, I'm like, wow, who's Maria? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it does make you seem like really edgy. Oh, yeah, so they're like, Ellie, and they're like, nice to meet you, and I'm like, I'm Maria. <laughs> and it fits in with your Russian background. Maria, yeah. Maria Colbert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's happened. People will come, like, I'll pass by because there's dogs in the neighborhood, and they'll be like, Maria, and I'll be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy, uh, I love that. Growing up, we had a dog named Debo. Um, Debo. If you guys have ever seen the movie Friday, you know who Debo is. Mm -hmm. And we just had this dog that was a husky child mix, and she was really aggressive, and she had one blue eye and one brown eye, so we named her Debo, which that's cool. That's cute. Is really actually it's really funny if you uh, know the movie. I don't know the movie, movie, but yeah, it's funny. It's really. Do you good. have any predictions in 2019 on dog names? I know this is the issue we all really want to talk about here. Yeah. I think I my prediction is I think Game of Thrones coming back. I think Arya and all those names are going to come back into to I popularity. Those. Yeah, that's, Arya's yeah. a great name. They're cool. Yeah. Do you think Marco, anyone will name their, their pets Marco? Yeah. <laughs> or like Ivanka? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to meet the dog who's like, it's, she's probably just exactly like her. Right? Yeah. Like a poodle? Blonde hair, Botox, use oh, the private email server. Oh. The dog? Yeah. yeah. Come at me. <laughs> Edgy comedy here at Bill. We're Brown. judging dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it's time for our special guest. Dylan Silver's comedic talent has been featured on platforms like College Humor, Soul Pancake, and Yahoo's Sketchy. And now she's taking on the role as a host of You Wish You Lived Here, HDTV's first Snap Original. The show follows her through a total room makeover inspired by a celebrity style, all for under $1,000. Let's take a look. Music is a huge part of Jess and Selena's life. I have an idea. Let's make a DIY hanging symbol lamp. First, get yourself a lamp making kit. You can find them at any hardware store. I got this one for about $10. Pull the frayed wire through the symbol hole and attach the washers. Attach the electrical element. To do that, there's a smooth side and a ribbed side. The smooth side goes to the gold contact point. The ribbed side goes to the silver contact point. Use a Phillips head to tighten the wire into place. Slide on the socket cap. Screw in the washers and the light bulb. We're using an Edison bulb for an extra mid-century look. Hang your new light and enjoy. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Dylan Silver. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is so exciting. Tell us more about the show. I love that the renovations are all inspired by celebrities. Like I watched, my favorite so far has been the Taylor Swift one. Uh huh. That's a good one. How yep. do you like? How do you decide? Like, okay, Taylor Swift. I don't know guitars. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's really based on the client themselves. So, for that episode. Our client, she really loved Taylor Swift's personality. She loved some of her actual interior design in her space, but she also, and she really liked music. And so it was sort of combining the things that she loved about Taylor and implementing them into her home. So for every episode, it's a little different. Like sometimes it's just like, oh, I love that music video that they do. So for the weekend, it was more like the vibe of his music videos. Yeah. Um, Lots yeah. of fire. Remember oh, that yeah. meme when he had that meme yes. where he was like burning alive and I'd be like, just light my apartment on fire. Well, Andrew could do that all on his own. We, we didn't do the fire part, but like he could, he knows he can if he. If he <laughs> and I want to know how long does it take to like renovate the space and shoot an app? We do full renovations that you would normally see like in a half hour show, but we do it in like, uh, I think 10% of the time a show normally is afforded. We do it in days. So, um, yeah, it's a really, really fast turnover. We're a really small team. Um, yeah, it, it's lightning quick to the point where you're like, are we really doing this? And is it gonna, and, and it always comes together in like the last couple hours and you just trust that everyone's working super hard. We all play different roles. Wow. Yeah, wow. super yeah. fast, yeah. And you're a part of the, so it's the first Snapchat original. So how does it feel to be a part of that? Is there a lot of pressure on you? It's the first Snapchat original for, yeah, for HGTV. Yeah, yeah, for HGTV. I think I just feel really lucky and stoked that I get to be a voice for the millennial generation. It goes beyond the millennials, but for those who can't buy a house and flip right. a whole right. place or like you're a renter and you're like, I don't know how to make my dream place. You just kind of get despondent and mm -hmm. you think you can't do it. And so our show empowers you to know that you actually can, it is feasible to have the place of your dreams on a budget. And we help you like 
you know, foster ways to do that. So yeah. I'm just, I'm pleased, yeah. Yeah, well, we're so excited for you. And how did you land that job? I landed the job. Um, I know they'd been searching for a while. When they heard about me, I gave them an initial tape, like taking them around an apartment, showing them some things, and talking about why I love DIYs. And then when I knew that maybe we were moving forward, I had this video. Um, something I wrote was a finalist in the Sundance Labs this year. Cool. And uh, when that happened, you had to make a pitch video. But instead of doing a generic, like, I'm going to talk in front of the camera and like say why this is a cool piece, I went to the Santa Monica Promenade and like talked to strangers on the street <laughs> and got them uh, stoked about like the content of it. And so I sent them that video to sort of remind them, like, right. I can make a stranger feel good, and, <laughs> and I love people. And like, That's I, very clever. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And there's an audience for this, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that it's, it's really about, like, I, I think it's a, a vulnerable situation to be in when you're like, here's my place. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, not my favorite place right now. And, and I wanted them to know that I want to be there for, the, for those individuals. And they make them laugh, like, yeah. all the time, yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, the DIYing. Like, um, what's your proudest DIY achievement to date? You know, I think I believe DIYs are incredible in the sense of, like, like recently, like I got a shelf that I thought was not cute, yeah. so I sanded it down and gave it a fresh coat of paint. Like that's cool, but I think DIYing my life gives me more uh -huh. pride. Like um, you know, help like learning how to change a tire, or <laughs> like or like if I, I got locked out of my apartment, getting uh, figuring out a way to get myself in, and you know, I feel like two things I do not know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I picked the teachers. lock well, yeah. I feel like practical things. It's, it's both. So yeah, yes. When I when I make something, I feel immense pride because I know I did it, and I did it in a way that I could afford to do it. But I think the whole concept goes kind of beyond, you know, the the material too. Yeah. And on the show, we see you do like a lot of heavy lifting, like actual like structural work, like <laughs> yeah. again stuff. I do not know how to do. Um, so, what, did you have any experience with that before the, you start start with the show? No, not much. I've used like hand tools, and I've done power tools a bit, like in university. I studied um, acting and writing, mm -hmm. and part of my scholarship was that you had to work in the shop, so you had to build sets. Cool. So that was, you know, we were doing that. Um, what school was that? George Washington University. Oh, okay. I'm from DC. You're, oh yeah, yeah. where? Um, Cleveland Park. So I grew up. You cool neighborhood. Yeah, very cool. You got your metro is kind of far from you though. You're like up this big hill. Oh, and... I, I lived a block away, luckily, so I was not too far. From oh, you're the like on the strip where there's all these cool shops yes. and stuff. That's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's rad. <laughs> you, you just mentioned though, you you were a writer, you're an actor, and you've done a lot of great comedic sketches, like for College Humor, for Soul um, Soul Pancake, Yahoo Sketchy. Like, um, what's that been like? And do you have any plans to go back to sketch comedy in the future? Uh -huh. I would love to if you know if people are making stuff. <laughs> I'm so down. Um, yeah, I, I started doing stand-up this year as well, so that's been really fun. And yes, it's a it's a thing I want to be a part of. I feel like in the show too, what's really cool is like there's always a comedic aspect in every episode. Right. So I don't feel like I've been too far away from the right. comedic sketch world. But I would I would yeah I would die. Well, I would love to be a part I'm of. I'm in again. level two writing sketch comedy UCB, so I'll give you Hit a call up. when I yeah. graduate. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. How many levels? They're like three. Four, three. Okay. okay. Four You're almost improv, done. Three. I'm almost done with sketch. Yeah. One more in improv, too. Sweet. <laughs> Speaking of sketches, uh, we also know and love you for your Ivanka portrayal. <laughs> so, what was it like getting into that character? And, uh, like, are you going to bring her back? Um, I would <laughs> love to bring her back. Uh, I, with Ivanka Trump, I felt like we saw on like SNL when Scarlett Johansson did sort yeah. of like a blanket, like she did a great job, it was sort of like a blanket um, the commentary, complicit, a complicit yeah. thing. And I just felt like no comedian was attempting to really analyze not only her mannerisms and her, her speech patterns, but also how can you call something out without demonizing or dehumanizing a person? Because she's, you know, in many aspects, she's, she's in a very powerful position and she's you know, a person who I'm sure is trying to do good, and it's just sort of like, well, how can we talk about what maybe we think is actually, what, what's, what do we think is going on in a way that, you know, is inclusive rather than sort of, yeah, I think I said it, like, demonizing. Yeah. And, I love yeah. that, the thought you put into that development. And you wear so many different hats, writer, actor. I mean, what one gives you the most life or that you just really love stepping into? 
I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I intended when I came out of university to just be performer, and then I realized that it was broader than that. I wanted to be in a place, in a position where I wasn't just waiting for calls. I wanted to foster and create content that I thought deserved a voice and, you know, um, material that wasn't necessarily out there. And so I feel that when I'm doing that, I feel that I'm doing good. So, yeah, performing's fun because it comes really naturally and like I studied it and then everything else feels a little more arduous, <laughs> but, it, but then the benefits are even more so in a way because you're stepping into the possibility of what else you're capable of doing. And so, yeah, I feel grateful that the path has not been linear and it's brought me to amazing places like here and with HGTV yeah. and I'm just, Really and the show stoked. is such a perfect fit for you, too. Oh, thanks. It's so much fun. We love it. I love doing it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dylan. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and you can catch episodes of You Wish You Lived Here on the Snapchat Discover page by searching HGTV or You Wish You Lived Here. That's all from us. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same table. Woo.